Hello! Today we will be creating a Fall Guys minigame in Scratch. The minigame we're going to be creating is Slime Climb. And in this game you have to run up a spiral mountain. Not spiral, but more like a mazy uh, zigzag mountain. And you have to avoid uh, obstacles. If you get bumped off of the path, you fall into slime and lose. And then slime also gets higher and higher as you race. And we're going to try and copy that um, mini game, or at least uh, recreate it in Scratch today. This is the character I'm going to first start off by creating. Um, so let me move that over so we can see Scratch. I've, I've gotten rid of the Scratch cat, and let's go ahead and draw this character. I'm going to just use uh, this purple here, maybe. Eh, let's see. He's a little bit more pink, this character. This whoever this is. So we're going to go ahead and draw... That's probably too big. Their head like this. And then their body is like a teal color. <laughs> They're wearing like a, a workout outfit. Which is pretty funny. He has armbands. I'm going to pre-draw the armbands. And then pants. All right, that's fancy. Um, let's get back to that pink color. I'm going to use the dropper here. Click right on that pink color. And we are going to uh, draw these arms back in. <laughs> Doesn't look too bad. I can always zoom in to get better details here. This character is going to be very small when I play the game. I'll paint that in. Um, yeah, that looks okay so far. And then they have a white face like that with little black eyes. <laughs> They're kind of oval shaped like this. All right, let's just get this last color here. And their shoes are um, dark blue. Oh no, I have to finish that outline, I think. Well, I can't do that, so I'm just going to convert it to bitmap and make this a little easier. Switch the color. And I'm going to get a darker blue. Put on some feet. <laughs> Fill that in. And there we go. Excellent. I'm going to recenter this character, though. I don't know where to do that quite there we go if I grab this pointer tool I can just put them right in the middle which is fine and now they're completed so I'm going to rename this to fall guy I'm going to make sure to spell that correctly and let's go to our code as you can see already if I wanted to make this game um, he takes up quite a bit of the screen so my maze won't be that large or can't be that big because it won't be able to fit so I'm going to shrink them to 30 percent so now he's very small so there's a lot more room for him to run around um, on this screen so Mr. Fall Guy can run around so to create this maze I'm going to use a lot of um, touching color code blocks uh, to rely on checking if he's touching slime or an obstacle It'll make uh, the coding a little easier. So in the backdrops here, I'm going to go ahead and paint one. I'm going to grab this paint bucket tool or paintbrush tool. We're going to go up to a pretty high number, maybe like 200. Eh, 100 is the size I can go. And then I'm going to create the maze. And that will be the ending right here. You know, make it a little wider in some places to make it a little easier. Okay. That looks like my fall guy will fit. So that's good. Perfect. Now, the next step, I want to make sure I can move fall guy. So I'll click on them and create some code for movement. I want to use the arrow keys on my keyboard. 
So I'm going to go first to events. We're going to grab this one green flag clicked, which you've probably used before if you've used Scratch, uh, which means when I activate the green flag, anything underneath this block will run or uh, that code will activate or go. The first thing I'm going to do, I want to make sure I always start down here. If I move them around, I'll see that that number is about 170 and 100 minus 149. I can just round that down to so minus 150. And now I can go to motion and I'll make sure I use this go to block. The numbers are going to already be there. So if I press the green flag, they'll always start at the beginning. Next step is we're going to use a forever loop because we don't want this code to just end. We actually want the fall guy to always or forever be able to move. So to do that, I will use uh, forever and then four if statements to check if a key is being pressed. Because if a key is being pressed on our keyboard, I want them to move. So each one's going to get their own key pressing. Now uh, we want to use up, down, left, and right. If I'm moving quick too quickly here, you can always pause the video and catch up. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is when I press up arrow, I want to move my character this direction. And you'll notice I'm at one minus 146. If I move upwards, the number is getting higher. So every time I move up, I want to change my Y by, let's go ahead and do two. And now if I press the green flag, press the up arrow, you'll notice I'm moving up. Now I'm cheating because I'm just running right through. We'll figure out um, how to make this maze work or make it so that we're not allowed to do that in a little bit. Up is two, so if I want to go downward, I need to change y by minus two. Now, if I want to go left and right, it's pretty similar. Left is backwards, it's kind of like if you're reading backwards, it's like minus, so backwards is lower numbers, and forwards to the right is like adding. A reading forwards and that's adding X so I'll do change X by minus 2 for the left arrow and then the little shortcut there is to right click and duplicate these small blocks instead of having to grab them over here um, and I can just do two if I press the green flag I now have full range of motion for my character and I can start programming uh, what happens if I leave this path. Now in the game I'm gonna make the slime all one color. So I'm gonna go back to my backdrop, click on backdrops, and I'm gonna color in this background with a very specific slime color. Maybe this really... that project couldn't save. Don't worry about that. <laughs> um, and I'm going to color in the background. I have to convert it to a bitmap, otherwise I'd have to like draw a bunch of squares and stuff. So I'll do that. Makes it easier sometimes to draw. That's a little shocking. Let's tone it down a little bit. That's probably good. So that pink color we're going to use a lot. We're going to use it for this background, and we're also going to use it for the slime that grows from the bottom and gets higher and higher as the game goes on. So the next step is going to be making sure that we're not touching the slime. And if we are, we're, going, we're just going to end the game. So we'll do another one green flag, click a whole new coding section just to keep it more organized. Same as before, we always want to check if we're hitting well, actually, let's try a different block. We can use this wait until block, which means the code will just stop here until whatever occurs in here 
happens and then it'll move on. So what I'm going to say is wait until we touch the slime and if we do, the slime color I should say, then we're going to end the game. And that's going to be found in touching color. I can click this and use an eyedropper and just click right on the color I want. And then I can use some code. I'll use stop all. But before I stop, I'll make my character, um, let's make them hide. Now, if I make them hide, the problem is that they won't come back if I press the green flag. So what I can do is at the very beginning of a game, once I press the green flag, make sure they show. So now I can press that green flag and they'll show back up. And as you can see, so far so good. I have I can race on the path here, but if I hit the pink, I will lose. Okay. Okay, the next step is creating the slime that comes from the bottom. So to do that, I will create a new sprite. I'm just going to create with the same color here. You can use the color picker to make sure, I guess. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Anyways, it'll be this color if you switch back and forth. You can come here, pick this color, and then you come back to this sprite and it'll stay like the same color. So I'm going to draw, let's do a 50. It's just going to be like a wavy ground. And I'm going to place it at the bottom the very bottom. Place it right down there. Now at the beginning of the game I can make sure it is hidden so that way the, you get a little bit of time before the slime starts rising. And then we can wait a couple seconds maybe let's give people three seconds to move and then we can do a show. And we also want to make sure it shows up right there at the bottom. So I need to use a go to X and Y block. And I'm going to put that at the beginning because I don't want it to like teleport. I want to start here, then show. Okay, great. And then in three seconds, it should show up. There it goes. <laughs> so let's try that again. Okay, three, two, one, it shows up, and then I can hit it, and I lose. Um, so let's make it move upwards. Now to make it move upwards, I'm going to use a little trick here. I'm going to grab this pen. Uh, if you didn't see that, I click there and click pen. Uh, the pen blocks here, because the pen, I'll make sure it erases everything at the start of a new game. And then I'll make sure... Um, let's do forever here. Every, wait one, hmm, two seconds or so. So forever, wait two seconds. And we're going to stamp downwards. And we're going to motion up. So we're going to do change, oops, change Y by 10. Let's see what happens there. So after three seconds, it'll start there. And you can see it rising now. So it's basically what stamp does is it just redraws the sprite and then moves it upwards. So it just, <laughs> as you can see, I wasn't fast enough. So we'll do a little test here to see how this works here. It's pretty slow, but that's okay. We'll add some obstacles to make this a little harder. Perfect. Okay, now for obstacles, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to make all of my obstacles the same color. That way I can just draw them and no matter uh, what, as long as I hit them, they'll all do the same thing. So the way that's going to work, I'm going to create a new sprite. I'm just going to create my first obstacle, which will be this orange. We'll just do a little circle. This will be a little dot that we have to avoid. And if we hit an obstacle, it's going to bounce us. So we're going to go into our fall guy. After I've created my obstacle, I'll call this uh, ball. 
And then the fall guy, we're gonna use pretty similar code to that, except we'll use forever because we should be able to hit it more than once, not just once. Uh, forever. And we will say if touching, well, wrong one. I have to do touching color. If touching color, and then I'll pick this guy right here. If we touch that color, uh, this fall guy, we're gonna have him uh, bounce. So to make him bounce, I can do change x by five. Um, and that'll make me bounce to the right. So we'll see if there's a way I can make it so you always bounce opposite of where you're hitting it from. So if I do that, he, he'll bounce if he goes this way, but the other way, if you can see at the top, he goes right through. So I know it's very small, but um, let's see if I can make it so if he's on the left side, he'll bounce to the left. If he's on the right side, he bounces to the right. And we're gonna do it just like that using if else code. So if we're touching it, and I'm gonna adjust this a little bit. I'm gonna move this guy out. If this guy is to the right of this ball. And the way we say that is using a greater than block. Oh no, this won't work. What was I thinking? We'll say if, um, we'll do it with key presses. Uh, if, key right arrow is pressed, we're gonna move to the left, minus five. Otherwise, we'll move to the right. So this won't really work too well for up and down movement, but that's okay. No, I'm trying to, trying to get my guy out of there. Go. All right, so I'm bouncing into it this way, come to the other side, bounce to the other. If I'm in the middle, <laughs> just pushes me right through. Yep, that, that works great. Now the problem here is this obstacle's too difficult. So I'm just gonna move it up like that. So that'll work really nicely. Um, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this. Um, this obstacle's fine. I'm gonna make a few of them by right clicking and duplicating. And now you can also right click and duplicate one and then you can change its design. Uh, for example, we'll make one that's a little thinner maybe. I'll just do something like this. And duplicate that one. They don't have the correct names, but that's okay. Um, I can draw another one. Let's see. Let's do a triangle. That one's gonna go right here. So we can't quite put them in the middle because we won't fit. But I think this is good. Okay, so this is uh, the basics of creating this game. Uh, if you wanted to add a finish line, you could try that out as well. I'm gonna go ahead and test this game out and see how it works, see if I can beat it on the first try. Let's see. I'm pretty good at scratch games, but we'll see. We'll see how difficult it is with the uh, slime flying upwards. Come on, fall guy. Don't mess up. Don't mess up. Oh, no. Stop. Okay, good. <laughs> We're making great time here. That obstacle is not, uh-oh. No, <laughs> I lost. Can I do it? I'm not sure. Go fall guy. Go fall guy. You can do it. If you want to make this game more difficult, you can make your fall guy faster. Oh no. And then it would be harder to avoid things. So instead of changing x or y by 2 or minus 2, you can do 3 or 4, 5, however how you want. 
All right, I think I made it to the end. I move on. I have, uh, I'm not eliminated from the game. So that right there is how you would create Fall Guy in Scratch, or Slime Climb in Scratch, and uh, go ahead and try that out. Uh, you can add more code to it, definitely. You can add a timer or a finish line, anything like that. So thank you for joining this week with uh, Digital Adventures Let's Build. I'll see you next time.